G'day, welcome. Um, today we're going to be trying the Baby Grange and the Baby Baby, baby. Grange. <laughs> I'm Trent. And I'm Jason. We're from the Wind Up Podcast. We're an unfiltered and unapologetically unprofessional wine journey. And our slogan here is drink, drink more, more, try more, more, learn more. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. So, Trentos, is it my thoughts of the week? Your thoughts of the week. I'm so going to thinking? share. I've been thinking about basket press. There's been way too much mention of basket press in the wine labels and on the stuff that I've been reading. And I'm trying to understand what the hell is basket press? What the hell is basket press, Jace? Exactly. There's too much mention of it. So, I had to have a look. I had to find out what it's about. Yeah. And uh, actually, it's, it's pretty straightforward when you think about the name. Basket press is where you get a basket, you chuck the grapes in it, and you press it down with a plate. You what have kind of this What type screw. of basket is it? There's different baskets that I've seen, but the one that's most common is like a wooden slatted basket. Yeah. And I don't know if that does anything in terms of flavor or anything like that, but that's yeah. the one that I've seen. Uh, and and the, whole, the whole point is you put a plate on the top, you screw it down a bit, apply a bit of downward pressure, and the juice comes out, and that's how you get the juice for the wine. So it's pretty damn straightforward. I thought there was more to it. Get a basket that has holes, put a heavy plate on top, Gently screw it screw down it. to slowly press out the grape juice. That's the part. Uh, I guess that's the part that's the art. The art is in how hard you p- apply the pressure. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing about that. But but if you if you put too much pressure, squeeze it too much, the problem is you can get a lot of the harshness and bitterness from the tannins into your wine so there is a bit of an art form to it yeah but it, it's an alternative to stomping on the f- something on the grapes with your feet you could just uh use the basket press to to get the juice out that's what i've been thinking about i hope i hope people uh now understand what that is it's pretty straightforward does it mean it adds a bit more of a premium to the wine i i don't know if it does yeah if if it i, I would have thought people stomping on the grapes should cost more money yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll, but it's an alternative. I'll it seems less. more efficient. I don't want to have people's feet on my grapes, but <laughs> it could add a bit more yeastiness and textural feel to the, the wine. The, though, as the well. texture of the warts and the hair could yeah, be coming through. The toe jam, I think, is what you kind of refer to the jamminess of the wine. Jam. And what have you been thinking about? Trent? I've been thinking about my mate Brett. Do you know Brett? No, and I know all your mates. Who's Brett? Brett. So Brett Lee. No, <laughs> Brett Lee. <laughs> Another cricketer. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. No, um, the Brett I'm referring to is called uh, Britannomyces, which is a yeast. Um, so it's generally not one of the good yeasts that we want as part of winemaking, but it tends to be around because it's natural, it's organic. It's in the barrels, on, it's on the grapes. It's sometimes kind of um, finds its way into the winemaking process. And what it creates is the aromas of barnyard, cow poo, Horsey, mousy, pungent, stable, metallic, or band-aid aromas. Delicious. I was just thinking about that. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like your dinner. Mm. But um, I don't know about you, but those are not the aromas that I kind of want in my wine. No, I get them in the public toilets, but not in my wine. Yeah. yeah. And um, generally, generally speaking, it's not something that's wanted. But having said that, in small and lower concentration, just add a bit of spiciness and leatheriness towards wines. And sometimes the winemakers actually accept a bit of that kind of Brett or Britannomyces yeast into um, its wine to create more of its kind of style. Right. Um, some people kind of refer to it as the kind of funkiness, but yeah, I don't uh, know for you, like it doesn't do anything bad in terms of a health, um, in a health kind of way, but... It tastes Ca- like a cow patty. Cow patty or cow poo or cow pies, as they refer to it. I don't want Brett near me, I could tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> or smelling band-aids is the other thing as well. Yum. So, uh, that, that, that's Brett. So, if you notice Brett, it's not a good thing. Yeah. And potentially, yeah, it's a bad wine. Brett is not my friend, I'm telling yeah. you that. But Brett Lee is an excellent cricketer though as well. <laughs> he is. The Lee brothers. The Lee brothers, quite good. yeah. Yes. Cool. So, what have you been drinking, Jace? What have I been drinking? I've been drinking a wine that you got me onto, actually. We had it here a couple of months ago, and it was a 2021 Woodcutter's Shiraz yep. from Torbrek. So, a SA wine. Yeah. And when you introduced it to me, I was like, wow, 8 out of 10. I really love it. And then you said, oh, it's my everyday drinking wine. 
<laughs> but that doesn't matter because it's it's quite cheap. It was twenty four dollars from vintage sellers. You got a good deal. It was like buy two get a discount. Two for twenty. Two so for forty dollars. Yeah. So that's that's good good value. But but honestly, the the wine itself was delicious. Yeah. Delicious vanilla flavors, delicious delicious berry flavors that were coming through. When we had it, we had some family over, my sister-in-law, my mother-in-law. She had an auntie that came over from overseas and they wanted to try some wine. Big family ordeal. Big family ordeal and I still gave it an 8 out of 10. They actually said, whenever I buy the wine again, buy them some because they loved it that much. So, that's a recommendation. Thank you for introducing me to that. Woodcutter Shiraz from Torbrek. Give it a go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, topic today is really pen folds. And um, trying the Baby Grange, which is the bin 389, mm -hmm. and then the Baby baby, baby Grange, which is the bin 8. Um, big reason for that one is because, number one, we don't have the budget to buy Grange, and that is actually the only reason why we don't <laughs> have the Grange. <laughs> $1,000. Sorry, I can't afford that right now. Yeah, I did try and look at some auction sites to yeah. try and surprise you with, hey, look what I've got, but... No, there aren't any real bargains because everyone knows what Grange is and yeah. unfortunately, no. Can't afford it. Got it. Okay. Um, so, um, before we delve into the um, two bottles that we have at hand, I want to take a step back and talk about Penfolds as a whole and the history behind it and the ethos around what Penfolds represents. So, uh, Penfolds established in 1844. Uh, by Dr. Christopher and Mary Penfolds. Um, they were from the UK, came to South Australia, took vine cuttings from there and established them in South Australia. Um, they started off with fortified wines, so the ports yep. that we kind of um, speak of and probably tasted in other episodes. And then um, from they took that from step to step. And then 1907, they became the largest winery in South Australia. So they're already successful before some of the big names of Penfolds came through. And then 1948, a chap by the name of Max Schubert became the company's first chief winemaker. And do you know what he created? Max had to create the Grange, right? It had to be the world-renowned one. No, he Am did right? Max's oh. Shiraz and Max's Cabernet. Oh, oh no. I got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have those wines now, obviously yeah. named after Max Schubert, the original winemaker, but the one that really kind of set the mark and also set um, Penfolds on the global map was Penfolds Grange. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about Max Schubert as a chap in, in terms of he's a bit of a rebel, a bit of a pioneer, and he liked to kind of um, break the norm and the boundaries um, firstly around the Grange, but it's also set that kind of ethos and culture around Penfolds going forward from um, back then to the now and to the future as well. So just talking about the Grange in itself, um, when they sent Max across into Europe, it was to Portugal to find out how to make better ports and fortified wines. He opted against that wine. He took a detour, went to Bordeaux and found out the fa fascinating world of the kind of still red wines. It took some of those winemaking procedures and thoughts and ideas and brought them back to South Australia and he started to make the Grange and the difference about the Grange as well is that his idea was around getting the best grapes around Australia to create the best blend so it's not so much about the terroir it's about creating the best fruit mm. from Australia and putting that together to create the best wine and a wine that will also last and age for the years um, so he put that together. He put that to the um, board of directors and say, hey, I created this wine. What do you guys think? They were probably, he was a, ahead of his time. They didn't really understand the wine at that stage and said, nah, we're not going to do it. The public won't understand it. Max, calm down. Settle down, old fella. Calm down. Um, <laughs> he, he didn't. He, he didn't take no for an answer. In secret, he started to help develop the Grange over the vintages, not 58, 59, 60. And then 60, he put into the Royal Show and it won a lot of awards. I think pretty much most of the awards and then shocked, I guess, the wine community go, where did this Grange come from? Yeah. The arm was, or the hand was kind of forced from Penfold to say, okay, Max, fair go. You were right. Grange is something we need to do. Go ahead and do it. And so that's history. Yeah. 
30, uh, 100 perfect scores later, um, heritage listing of Penfolds Grange in South Australia after, and that's where we stand today in Penfolds and also the Grange itself. What a great story. And Penfolds is so iconic. Yeah. I think it represents Australian wine. If you go into the international community, I would say if you know Penfolds, you know it's an Aussie wine that's coming through. I think about what you just said, 30, 100 point wines. Yeah. Like we had one 10 out of 10 wind up corkscrew <laughs> wines, right? And that was amazing. So to have 30 shows how good the quality of this blend is. Yeah, and also how tough it is to get a 10 out of 10 corkscrew rating on the wind up as well. <laughs> We're harsh <laughs> critics. That's great. Yeah. I love the history on Penfolds. So as I say, that was the past. Innovation, experimentation, pushing mm. the boundaries. Mm. Now that same kind of ethos and culture hasn't changed. We talk about the ones um, now we... The other, the other episode talked about the CWT, the Chinese yes. wine trial. Yes. How they're trying to push new frontiers in China, trying to create new wines, looking at the terroir there and also um, pushing their kind of wine mate, winemaking uh, expertise into China as well. Um, the other ones I want to talk to is RWT that we've seen in recent times, the red wine trial that we might try in another episode. Yatana 144 as well, 144 being representative of the 144 trials to create the Chardonnay or the white white grange that they like to refer to it as well yeah which we hopefully can try in another episode as well yum if budget at some point allows us to <laughs> cheaper than the red grange so hopefully the white grange is a bit more accessible um but the the two wines i want to kind of focus on of recent times i've seen that really look, represents how innovative and how much Penfolds has kind of pushed the boundaries of Penfolds 2. And have you heard of that? No, I don't even know what that is. What's the Penfolds 2? Penfolds 2 is really looking at um, two different winemaking areas, Bordeaux and also the Barossa in South Australia and combining the two. So they're creating a work with Penfolds 2, which is 71% Bordeaux grapes wow. and then 29% South Australian grapes and putting that together into a Cabernet Shiraz Merlot blend. Um, bottling in um, South Australia and then coming out recently, yeah. I think. That's great. Blending two countries' grapes together. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So, again, I don't know many winemakers that actually do that. I, I've seen it in terms of blending different um, geographies within the same uh, country. country, but yeah. not so much different countries. And was it 2,000 or 3,000, how many kilometers apart? The other one, which is really representative of that kind of in innovative uh, mindset as well, is around Penfolds 5. Have you heard of that? No, no, not at all. So uh, I mentioned before, Yatana being the White Grange. Um, what they've done is they took the five best vintages of Yatana, which is the 2021, 2016, 2014, 2012, and 2011, then blended them together. So five vintages blending together create the one wine. Mm. So... Uh, I think Peter Gago, the winemaker, said, I don't think anyone else has done this in the world, but we are people that want to try that. Um, it has come across with rave reviews in terms of what it is, but it's also re um, limited release. I think I only made 2,200 bottles. I want a bottle. That sounds <laughs> delicious. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be spectacular. But again, it's really representative of that kind of innovative mindset trying yeah. something new not accepting the norm but pushing the boundaries as well yeah. in line with what max Schubert did with the grange yeah i love that about penfolds one's bringing two countries together another one's bringing different vintages together that's just innovative yeah uh the other thing i want to touch on is around is um the reference towards bin like i always say with penfolds you know today there's bin eight bin three eight nine mm. i don't know what that meant i always thought it's like different garbage bins they kind of refer yes. to yeah Obviously, that's not the fact. Yeah. Uh, I don't think garbage bins. I thought a basket of, of basket, the wine. Yeah, something. Yeah. 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 So, bin actually refers to the batch identification number. So, that was the storage location so where they kept the grapes for maturation. And it was established when um, Max Schubert was creating the Grange because, as I mentioned before, in Max creating Grange, is a mix of different blends and from different areas as well. So, how do I know what's from what? Mm. There we go. Batch identifi identification number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and so on. Yes. So obviously that's that's the origins of it. It's changed slightly. Obviously they don't have seven hundred and seven um, different bins, bins for the <laughs> seven hundred seven, etc., like that. But I think there's still some linkages back to you know the bin eight uh, is a uh, uses certain same bins as a three eight nine 
same as the 28 as well. So that's what the bins refer to. Enlightening. I didn't know that. Thank you. Uh And so we got on to the wines of today. So again, back to the topic. Uh, We're going to try the Baby Grange, which is a 389, and then the Baby Baby Grange, um, the bin 8. So... The 389, should we start with that one first? We'll start with the 389. The 389 picked this up uh, from a mate that had the um, connections with Penfolds. It's the 2019 Cabernet Shiraz. And picked this up for about $70. It typically retails for about $90 uh, from what I understand. And uh, that's the first time that we're going to try. So, so let's try it on the eyes, nose, and mouth. Where do we find this, mate? With such good deals, though. So no one, you got, no you... one can know. It's a secret, <laughs> mate. But I feel like everyone's got a penfolds, mate, somewhere. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> you can go through me. <laughs> but interestingly, comparing the two, they're actually quite similar. But the bin eight is probably a bit darker. So. Deep, dark, yeah. one uh, thing, very look. One thing you pointed out earlier is that for the Bin 389, it's referred to as the Cabernet Shiraz. Mm. And for the Bin 8, it's called the Shiraz Cabernet. Yep. So just like instead of the Trent and Jason show, it's a Jason, Jason. and Trent show. Yeah. Same, same, but different, different. And it makes you think, what is the difference? Why did they reverse the order? We I need to know. find out. Okay, let's try that. So we're going to, you we the, looked at the uh, We looked at the, on the eyes and then on the nose, what are you smelling there? Definitely smell the kind of big fruits, very iconic in terms of the kind of South Australian, I don't know, um, wines, namely Penfolds as well, being iconically South Australian as well. I still get Cabernet. It's big, it's big though, right? It's yeah, big. yeah. The, the scent is, is quite strong, but the, the Cabernet kind of herbaceousness is is coming through for me. And and you've given it a taste. I'll I'll give it a taste. Let us know what you think. Big fruity juicy big tannin still as well 2019 mm. still definitely got years to age around it we've probably let this breathe for like an, about an hour now i feel that has kind of mellowed it's down mellowed. from what we had before yeah which makes it a bit more approachable the tannins have softened yeah i feel that makes it a bit better <laughs> yeah i completely agree we had a taste of this maybe an hour ago and to me there was a very distinct you get the fruit flavor and then there's a sharp distinction between the tannins taking over. I feel they're quite integrated. It's softened it's in softened. my mind. And um, <laughs> that's interesting how much that oxidization can change it. But the flavors coming through, what, what kind I've, of flavors are you getting? Again, the, the fruits from the Shiraz are definitely there kind of at the fore. But then as that kind of goes away, I feel that Cabernet come through. And I, sa- I said before to you, I like the kind of the, the flinty graphite kind of lead pencil mm. kind of come through that I always get from Cabernet. Yeah, I know you like that. the capsicum yep. kind of flavor that comes through. But I like that kind of herby kind of structure that Cabernet always brings. Mm. Comes through. And I, I feel that they probably got this blend right, but I could see this also just kind of evening out over, over time, time and yep. just getting better and better and better. I'm really enjoying the tannins. Uh, uh, like is it like the tap dance on the tongue or it's not the, like it's, it's a waltz it's a waltz isn't it it's a yeah and if, if you're saying the waltz is gentle it's that gentle kind of tug that's kind of just pulling back on the cheeks and the mouth and so forth it's it's not very harsh and wow that's changed over time mm. uh, i'm really it, enjoying it, that it, one it, yeah i think the term they use is still quite grippy tannins mm. of it and it's very fine high is it hd right yeah you were saying that the kind of hd tannins on it it's not rough no it's there it's but it's kind smooth. of smooth dusty but it's definitely there and it's still big yeah it's 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 not a it's not a hard tug it's a soft tug is the way i would put it i don't know <laughs> if other people want to say it that way but I, i'm really enjoying that look i um we had this earlier for uh for an hour ago and i my corkscrew rating, I think it's increased, to be honest. <laughs> if I was to give to give this a corkscrew rating, I give this 8 out of 10. I am really enjoying it. I think it's got a great uh, great balance of the fruit. Uh, 
it's it's a bit high alcohol. You can have a bit more time yeah. to it, but that those tannins and that grippiness yeah. is really enjoyable. What do you think? What do you give it out of ten? I knew it in your face when you had it. Oh, was really? there. you were looking at me. Yeah, <laughs> but I completely agree because yeah. when I said that, it's kind of softened. Yes, and it's kind of come together a bit more with that kind of oxidation or um, yeah access towards air to kind of bring out those aromas and flavors. Um, definitely has done that, and I'll give it eight out of ten as well. That's surprising because it's still young. It's a 2019. Wow. I'm interested to see what happens to the bin eight with that time. Okay, let's go. Let's give that a try. After the bin eight, which is the baby, 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 baby Grange. Oh, that was three. That was too many babies. <laughs> We're trying to res- reference Justin Bieber, but uh, if you, anyone doesn't, you've had that problem again. Too many babies. Yeah, too One, many too babies. Many. Uh, three kids. I should have no. <laughs> three kids is amazing. <laughs> I do not want that to go out in this podcast. And so let's go to the eyes. We talked about it earlier. <laughs> Very similar to the three. Similar. Eight nine. It's just a bit darker, a bit more purple, less less translucent on there. So this is the Shiraz Cabernet. Have we held it up to the camera? Maybe, maybe let's hold it up. It's a twenty. Uh, it's a twenty twenty bin eight Shiraz Cabernet. So the reverse of the three eight nine, which was a Cabernet Shiraz. Yeah. This one's a Shiraz Cabernet. I don't know whether that means something. You seem to kind of infer that it's a bit more Shiraz blend compared it, to the Cabernet it's Shiraz. It's got to be. It's It's got to be. And we need to look at the proportions. If anyone oh, knows yeah. in the community the proportion of Shiraz to Cabernet in both a bin eight and three eight nine, let us know. Put it in the comments. Okay. So we said it's a bit darker. How is it on the nose? Oh gosh, I need to smell the two. I feel like this is kind of mellowed down as well. Both of them have mellowed, but I, I do feel there's a softer scent on the nose. On the eight, right? The, no, no, from I'm, the three eight nine is the, what I think. I think it's a bit more muted to me. The three eight nine is more. The muted. eight, the, the eight is a bit more muted. muted. So I the three eight nine is a bit softer, bit bigger, and a bit more there. But but. The, uh, the fruits uh, get a bit of a floral scent to it. On the taste, let's give it a go as Trent gives it a whirl in his mouth. You know what? Mm. It's funny. Over time, yeah, I feel like the gap between the 389 and the 8 has gone a bit bigger. Mm. And the 389 mm. really shone a lot more. I, compared uh, to the eight, the eight like both of them have the same body, but I'm getting a bit more chocolate on the um, on the eight than the three eight nine. I got to have them both. But you're saying that the three eight nine is actually leaps and bounds ahead. Mm. What's the differences between the two flavors that you're tasting? For me, it's like I said with the three eight nine, it felt like it had more layers to it, like had that fruit that had the graphite and the pencil kind of come through, then the finish was really, really long for me. Yeah. The eight on the nose, it felt a bit more suppressed. Um, the fruit's still there, but maybe I ha- I'm not getting as much of that kind of cabernet come through and the finish isn't as long. Yeah, I I just had both while while you were talking there and... And the, and, the the very, tannins, and the tannins on the 389 feel smoother. Smoother. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's a harshness between the two that you can really, you can tell the difference. Mm. Like the 8 is kind of uh, very strong grippiness to it. 389 is like, hey, let's have a Thai massage together. It's kind of a lot smoother. Does that I make sense? Know. You looked at me and you were no, like... No, I felt like maybe the, the, the eight more the Thai massage and Which the eight when people the Swedish massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're still thinking about the right. tugging before. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Swedish massage. Massage. <laughs> massage. is a lot, is a lot softer and smoother. I but there, there, there... Depends on what massages you have, Jace. I only have... The medical, the medicinal kind the medicinal, of message. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you can tell a difference. Like I think of the word harshness between the two. Uh, I'm just trying, trying to simplify it. The bin eight is a bit more harsh is, is the way I see it. Yeah. yeah. I see. Um, yeah. The bin, the bin eight. 
It was a bit more, I think I said before, it was a bit more Matthew Hayden, right? And then the, the three, mm. they've been, they've been three, eight, nine's a bit more of a Ricky Ponting. Cool. Explain that. Like Hayden. With brute force, strength, right? Was a three, eight, nine's a bit more elegance to it. Was Hayden better or baller? Better, better. Glad yeah. you know your cricket. So, so bash it out, get the sixes, Ponting. Yeah. What more? Or, or should I use this analogy then? Maybe the bin eight's a bit more of a LeBron James and the. Been three now. It's a bit more of a yeah, Steph Curry. That, I, I resonate with that one. Yeah, I got it. A bit yeah. more elegant style. Okay, should I keep on going with the analogies as well? No, no, stop no? right there. <laughs> LeBron James smashing it down, yeah. using the power and force, athleticism. Yeah. You're yeah. right. It's stronger. It's in your face. Mm. Uh, but it reflects the price point. So, yeah. bin eight, $40, 389 closer to the 90 Yeah. Um, Corkscrew ratings? Should Corkscrew we do that? rating of the bin eight. So, I gave the 389 and eight. eight. Bin eight's not that bad, to be honest. It's just $40. Just I don't think I mentioned $40 for the bin eight. The value, and then think of it over time. I'd give the bin eight an eight. Ah, oh, sorry, a seven. Uh, and I think in a couple of years, it might be even better. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree as well. I say, yeah, three eight nine kind of edges it, but not by much. Um, I can definitely see where the 389 is really going to evolve over time. But the bin 8, I think it's good now, especially with food as well. Mm. Um, 7 out of 10 for me as well. Right. So that was delicious. Mm. So last thoughts on Penfolds. What are you thinking? Um, last thoughts on Penfolds is, Jason, when are we going to have your Grange? <laughs> Why do you keep bringing that up? <laughs> the Grange is going to come. Uh, I've got three. I've got three daughters. I've got three Grange. When my daughter is about to turn legal daughters? age, um, <laughs> that'll take even longer. <laughs> my daughter will turn uh, legal age, which is eighteen in Australia, in nine years. So nine years time is when we'll. Are find your the Grange. Granges from the years that your daughters are born? No, not yet. No. They're all the same year, actually. Oh, what? Okay. And I'm. If anyone in the community wants to donate some Granges for the years of my daughters, let me know. So but if you get years of something else, you could then forego the Grange to drink, right? If I get another Grange, it's it's game time. We're gonna maybe have a like a Domain Romney Conti. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. the years of your daughters, then we can drink the Granges instead, right? Absolutely, okay, absolutely. Cool. It's done. I it's found done. the wines for you. Just is so that you the thirty-six thousand dollar one? No, that's a fifty thousand yeah, dollar one. Yeah. <laughs> maybe in the future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, look. I think this this resembles and and the tasting that we've had is about SA wines and Penfolds wine. I think the the boldness of it all and the power of it all is what stands out. Over an hour of aging and and oxidization, the the profiles change and it softens. So exactly. something to think about when you're tasting your wines. Give it a bit of time to to relax and, and get the oxidize, oxidization in there. It's a bit like people as well, right? Over a bit of time as well, you've softened up as well. And you've come better as well. <laughs> I've come better. Uh, I think we're going to edit that part out. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, I, think, I, I think let it relax and you'll enjoy it. These are delicious wines. Think about the value. Try Penfolds. If you're from international... Give it a crack. That kind of represents the Aussie wines. There's so much more to Aussie wines, but it's a good intro. Yeah. Try the Penfolds. And that's us from the wind-up. And so our slogan is drink, drink more, more, try more, more, learn more. more. Thanks all. See ya.